Hello, I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel, leader of the Abolitionist Party of Canada, and today I'm going to explain how I got the chance to found a political party and run for Prime Minister of Canada in 1993, which later got me into the United Nations for the Millennium Assembly in 2000, where they passed Resolution C6 to governments to restructure the global financial architecture with an alternative time-based currency. I call this the Unilets Resolution. Someday you'll have an interest-free international bank account. So, how did it all start? Well, way back in 1981, I got busted running the biggest casino bust in Quebec history. That was it, when I ran the gaming house. The first casino in Quebec. They shut me down, unfortunately. Then, in 1993, once again, I started another big casino, and one more time, they busted this casino, but I'd made a million dollars before they could shut me down. So, what are they going to do? Well, unfortunately, I did get convicted, and the judge found me guilty of running a gaming house. And when the police went searching for the $1.3 million, I told them the truth, and it made quote of the week. Here it is, quote of the week, which said, the police wouldn't let me keep it, so I spent it all. Gambler John Turmel on the $1.3 million he made at his illegal casino. Well, I thought it was legal at the time, but anyway, they didn't. And finally, I was facing jail time, of course, 10 years for the million dollars, but the judge said, no, that doesn't apply when he spent it all. And in two years for running the biggest game in house in history, but I did ask the judge to uh, give me community service instead, and he did give me 200 hours community service instead of jailing me for that. So I did get the million bucks. I did get a chance to blow it running for Prime Minister of Canada and founding a political party, the Abolitionist Party of Canada. And why did I pick the name abolitionist? Well, I knew that the abolitionist movement were the free the slaves movement. And I realized that most people thought slavery was ended just because the metal chains are gone. But I realized that debts can be changed too, and that it's an invisible form of debt slavery, and that my job was to come here and try and end the debt slavery and get the debt slaves into... So here are the party programs. Abolition of interest rates. If you got a source of loans without interest, what moron would go and pay interest, right? So, the abolitionist party favors the abolition of interest rates, the chains of financial slavery, by the national and international use of the world-famous interest-free local employment trading system, LETS, by the United Nations as UNILETS. This public domain barter banking software would replace the interest-bearing programs currently being used on the computers of all orthodox banks. Two, a $1,000 monthly dividend program. The problem is the money plates have been given to the private banks. The solution is the money plates must be taken back from the private banks. And the benefit is that the interest can be diverted to a monthly benefit for all. The federal government's given our money plates to the banks and now taxes us all around a thousand bucks per month to pay the private plate holders. That's approximately $300 billion a year in our name. The abolitionist party would get back your thousand a month by taking away the plates from the banks, having the treasury operate them under the Let's program, and dividing up the interest saved to give each citizen a monthly $1,000 dividend over and above any other income, just as if you owned one share non-transferable in the Corporation of Canada. A family of five would receive 5000 a month, 60000 a year. Only rich people used to receive dividends, but with the government use of the Let's program and the plates, all citizens would benefit. Three, interest-free loan program. Well, the Canadian Treasury would also make interest-free loans of Treasury money for the purchase of homes and big-ticket items. The items themselves would be the collateral for the loans. Why pay interest on a house when there's no risk at all of the house if it's properly insured? It can't run away. All Canadians would borrow Treasury money to purchase big-ticket items with only the requirement that they pay back the principal as fast as the asset depreciates. A $150,000 house estimated to last 50 years would cost $3,000 a year at $250 a month plus upkeep. With the asset itself as the only necessary collateral for a loan and no interest on the loan, affordable housing would be available for everyone. 
It would also permit a reverse mortgage, as offered by various financial institutions, but without any interest. Our Let's program allows the aged to stay in the home that they love instead of being shipped off to the state home and losing their dignity. We allow the homeowner to trade their equity for services that they can no longer perform themselves. This process allows for services such as snow removal, lawn care, handyman, companions, health, and nursing needs. When the aged can no longer stay in their homes, we balance accounts and find more suitable care. No interest taken from them, though. Four, no-fault insurance program, self-insurance program, large database insurance program. This I'm particularly proud of because no one has ever caught into how important it will be someday. The Abolitionist Party self-insurance program is the same software as the dividend program. Instead of dividing up the interest diverted from the banks to our dividends, it would divide up the losses due to accidents, just like the old barn raising custom where neighbors would rebuild a barn for a fire victim. Once members are financially connected to a Let's database, self-insurance would be immediately possible. Starting small, it would be trivial for members to register the value of the deductible portion of their automobile insurance and share the prorated burden of any individual victim. With a large enough database of members, it would be possible to self-insure the collision portion. With a very large database, it would even be possible to self-insure housing. Today, we pay premiums in case we burn. This program would let us pay as we burn, not up front. If there were no fires, the program would not be used and there would be no premiums. So basically, once we're financially connected, we can get rid of the gamble of having to buy insurance in case we get into trouble because we know that if the trouble happens, the database will pick up the cost and divide it equally fairly. Five, free treasury checking account and ID. Since everyone would have a treasury account and receive the monthly dividend, the abolitionist party credit would credit government checks directly to that account. This would leave more money in the hands of the people while effectively putting the discount check cashing guys out of business. Abolition of income tax and GST, sales tax. When you have a smart way of doing taxation, say once a year when everybody's rich, let's say once a year everybody gets together, everybody's rich for a moment, and they figure out what the total cost is and we all chip in our share. Boy, that would be handy. Instead, what we do is we have a system where we have to keep track and have receipts for every single transaction. Can you imagine a more stupid way of taxing than having to keep receipts for every transaction? Well, this is so stupid, but my solution is someday I believe it'll be an asset tax. So that at the end of the year, we all get together, whoever's got the most, throws in this three, four, five percent, pays the most. And whoever's got the least, pays the least. And in that way, the richest men in the world know they're the richest men in the world because they pay the richest tax. Right now, a lot of people pay more, higher percent of their income in tax than Bill Gates does. So in my world, Bill Gates would be the richest man in the world because he paid the most tax, which would be the fairest way to do it. And we don't have the stupidity of keeping records for every single hamburger we ever buy. Abolition of Hemp Prohibition. This is from 2003 when I was arrested bringing seven pounds of marijuana to the Prime Minister on Parliament Hill to prove that the law was dead at that time. And I made the government drop the charges against 4,000 people. And they didn't even mention my name. But that was me who did that. And it's all explained why in a little poem I wrote when I was a speaker at the marijuana rally in 1994 in Toronto. Ode to Laughing Grass. Throughout all history, hemp's been a plant of great repute. Four months to grow a mini tree of 20 foot from shoot. More oxygen converted from dioxide carbon smogs. Four times more wood than forestry can chop trees into logs. A hardy plant, insecticides and fertilizers, not. It grows so tall the shade kills weeds for fertile garden plot. With petrofuels with sulfur being burned into the air, a fuel of biomass would help environmental care. Hemp fuel, hemp paints, hemp varnishes, hemp fibers, cloth and rope, hemp fertilizer, oil and plastics, medicines of hope. For crops of untold uses which can soon be realized, our greatest source of biomass must first be legalized. While alcohol debases, vibes of negative grow strong. God's laughing grass makes calm and jolly, wishing no one wrong. There's never been a recorded death from using hemp, they say. It's sedative that fits receptors in our DNA. 
The industry of dirty petrochemicals may fear its nature's agri-chemicals will substitute its clear, its source of protein primary for man and beast alike, the best plant used for finger in environmental dike. The chance that we may yet evade environmental doom with planet's fastest growing vegetable, there's no need for gloom. The abolitionists charge that on lies are based these laws. Abolishing hemp prohibition is our second cause.